Okay, welcome everyone. Coming at you on a nice Wednesday morning. Thought it'd be good to start off with the legendary Jimmy Cliff. For the younger members of our audience, if you've not been introduced to the harder they come, it is probably, <clears throat> I think on anyone's list, one of the top five soundtrack, movie soundtracks of all time. I'd put it at number one. So check that one out. A little harder they come to get things going, and it's appropriate on a day that we're going to be speaking with Hardline Solutions, who is do who are doing some really exciting stuff with advanced technology, really making a big impact on mine operators. You all, most of you heard me say it in the teaser for this event, which obviously got out there because a lot of you have signed up. There's a lot of demand for this event that we're hosting this morning and for good reason. But I'm going to say what I said on that teaser <clears throat> again for emphasis. Out of any sector in the economy, perhaps none is more suited to reap the immediate advantages of automation than mining, right? Both from an efficiency standpoint, from a safety standpoint, automated mines are the way of the future and of the present, right? We're seeing it now. A company like Hardline has made great inroads on this front. Now, Hardline was established in 1996, so it has a long track record of operation success. They're based in Sudbury, and it's a technology company that's a global leader in mine automation, mine production optimization, and remote control technology. And now they've recently announced a breakthrough technology offering called Teleop Assist. We wanted to bring them on to our virtual platform so they could get you, our Northern Miner members, up to speed on this key advancement. As a lot of you know, we do. Uh, we often have an investor focus. We're bringing you issuers uh, and producing companies on. But when there's uh, supplier and service companies that are really making headway in the industry and are bringing forward technological advancements that are set to really benefit um, our many of our members who are running mining companies, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that you're up to speed and you're aware of what's going on. And to make sure that you're aware, <clears throat> we're bringing one of the key leaders out of Hardline. We're about to welcome. Ryan Sigelko, he's going to walk us through this teleop assist and what it can mean to your business. Now, Ryan's the senior vice president of technology, and he's responsible for researching, planning, and the implementation of new programs and overseeing development of Hardline's latest technology. He brings 20 years of knowledge towards creating tailored solutions to address each client's business and technology objectives. And we're grateful that he's found some time in his busy schedule to be with us here this morning. Ryan, welcome to the Northern Miners virtual platform. Where are you coming at us from today? Thanks, Anthony. So I'm here in our Sudbury office, downtown Sudbury at the Technology Center. Excellent. I understand that you, this is, I've, vis, I've visited the Hardline original office. Hardline has a large office where they're actually, it's, it's actually a pretty proud Canadian story because you're doing a lot of high-end, high-tech manufacturing just outside of Sudbury. And now you have the, so when did the, the downtown Sudbury office come into play? We moved into downtown about uh, two years ago, just over two years ago, we've had this office. We, uh, we saw there was a need to uh, have our business closer to the downtown core, trying to attract talent. Um, we, we didn't have access to um, um, public transit in that, out in Dowling. So this was a, a key move for us to move downtown. Excellent. Well, congratulations on that. Anything that makes it easier for your clients <clears throat> and your staff is always a good call. So give us a little bit of a, a synopsis before we do a more of a deep dive on Teleop Assist. Why does it matter? Why do executives and my managers need to pay attention? Sure. So first of all, thanks, uh, Anthony. Thanks, uh, Northern Miner, for putting this on. And, and thank you all for, for joining us today. We know in this, uh, in this time, everyone's busy. So we thank you for, for carving some time out of your busy schedules to, to join us today. We're excited to, to launch this product. Um, Teleop is a, is a well-known brand in the industry. We've been able to remotely control and, and, uh, and do Teleop on equipment of all types, sizes, uh, makes and models um, in, in all kinds of different industries. And uh, our automation portfolio as well, we've been able to do uh, automation on some of these pieces of equipment. But Teleop Assist is really a new addition that we're adding to the, the um, portfolio now. It's a semi-autonomous guidance system for underground LHDs. 
And it allows uh, um, an intermediate step between teleop and full automation. That's a lot easier to put in, a lot easier to implement, a lot easier to get used to for, for a lot of the operators in that. Um, so what we've done here today is we've put together a, a pre-recorded presentation, walking through some of the, the features of that, some of the benefits and, uh, and some of the, the, the different facets of uh, teleop assist and, and what it means. Um, so we're uh, again, happy that everyone can make it today. And with that, we'll hand off to the video. Fantastic. All right. Thank you very much, Ryan. We'll watch with great interest. Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Sigelko. I'm the Senior Vice President of Technology for Hardline, based out of Sudbury, Ontario, a nickel capital of the world, and a global mining leader. Thank you to the Northern Miner webinar series for having us today so we can showcase our new product, Teleop Assist. Before we dive a little deeper into what Teleop Assist is, I'd like to share a little bit of the history of Hardline, who we are, what we do, and uh, give you a little bit of background on the company. So Hardline is a global technology leader for over 25 years in the mining industry. We've been giving products to the industry for, for that time. We started off though as a service company. We uh, understood that servicing and maintaining equipment in the industry is so important. So that's where we started. But after that, we grew into a company that develops, uh, researches and develops, manufactures, distributes, and installs our equipment all over the world. We have offices in Sudbury, Ontario, which is our headquarters, and our downtown technology center, where we're standing in right now, as well as offices in Salt Lake City, Utah, Santiago, Chile, and Lima, Peru. In addition to those offices, we also have distribution in many different parts of the world that service our customers. Soon we'll be joined by Jeff Yoki, our quality supervisor, who's gonna give us a little more information about Teleop Assist and the operator station itself. But first, please take a look at our corporate video. The global mining industry has challenges they need to solve. Emerging technologies could potentially solve those challenges that the mining companies have. If we look around the world, deeper mines are developing all over the place, right? So technology is going to bring us the capacity to operate without having to expose you know, personnel to difficult situations. Keeping a very strong bond between industry and academia ensure that the courses that we offer are relevant. It also means that graduate students that we produce from our department have advanced level of skill in those areas as well. As mines get deeper and get more complex, and as the machinery gets more complex, our technology allows them to, to be automated. We have a huge supply of talent. We have leading academic institutions. We have engaged government that supports and cares about the future of the mining industry. Think of how Hardline is redefining what it means to have a job in the mining industry. It's going to make it more efficient. It's going to make the industry more competitive, particularly the Canadian industry, which is where all these things are happening first. I would say we could get at least 15 to 20 percent per shift if we can have that operator work in between while we're doing the gas burn. Opening up distributorship and partners in different parts of the world, being able to bring our product to everyone is, is really the goal moving forward. When you tackle issues with technology, you solve them, and you create value out of it. And that gives us the opportunity to be very comfortable and productive with the same amount of the trading involved. And that's key for us. Now, in order to fully grasp Teleop Assist, which is our newest product we're rolling out, I'd like to walk you through some of the features and benefits of Teleop, which Teleop Assist is, is an add-on to. Teleop is a remote control system that allows us to remove operators from the environment where the machine is running and locate them virtually anywhere. The key drivers for Teleop is really safety and productivity. From a safety standpoint, there's many environments in which are very dangerous for operators to be in, whether it be underground mining, surface mining, or even other, other markets. With Teleop, we can take that operator completely removed from the machine, but also removed from the environment that they're in. 
So in an underground mine, for instance, we could have machines that are running underground, whether it be, again, drills or locomotives or, or loaders or trucks, and move that operator to a surface-controlled environment where all the dangers and the environmental factors uh, that the operator would normally be, um, be in, that now they're removed from that, sitting in a comfortable office on surface, similar to what we see um, here behind me. For a productivity standpoint, there's many applications where uh, there's a lot of lost time between shifts changes or, or travel time to the machine in, uh, in again, both uh, any industry. In an underground mine, the time between shifts or the time after a blast is typically lost production. With teleop, an operator sitting on surface can take control of machines, run them during the shift change, and actually get back that productivity that's, that was once lost. Again, adding rock breakers, trucks, and, and drills, or whatever other pieces of machinery are in that cycle, we can actually get back a lot of productivity in by using the teleop system. One added benefit to that, which is a key part of both safety and productivity, we found a work-life balance addition by having teleop, where operators can be housed uh, far away from the, the site, where fly-in sites or long travel sites are able to actually have people in urban centers and being able to operate that machine from any city. For instance, over the years, we've had our machine here based in Sudbury, near Sudbury, Ontario, and we've been able to run that machine through Teleop from Vancouver, Las Vegas, Toronto, Montreal, all the way even down to Australia, where an operator is sitting in Australia and we're able to operate that machine in Sudbury, Ontario. And just for a little bit of context on some of the distances, from Sudbury here to Las Vegas is about 3,700 kilometers. Beyond that, even to Australia, having an operator in Australia running a machine here in Sudbury is around just approaching 18,000 kilometers. So aside, even from those impressive distances that we can achieve with Teleop and all the features and benefits that we have, it can be installed on virtually any machine, any make, any type, any model, any year. Over the years, we've installed these on loaders, trucks, locomotives, rock breakers, drills, bulldozers, excavators, shovels, and many, many more. An important feature of Teleop is also our ability to connect GPIO devices or general purpose input and output devices. Many times in a teleoperated or remotely controlled environment, there's other devices, auxiliary devices that we need to control, such as water sprayers or ore pass doors or gates or even ventilation for the area. All of these things are required to operate if you want to operate a remotely controlled machine. So from the teleop operator station, we can actually connect to our GPIO devices, operate these from the operator station, and even work in scripts. If it's required to, to run certain devices upon certain triggers, those can all be programmed into the Teleop station. Two other add-ons to Teleop that we currently have are Teleop Multi and Teleop Auto. To start with, Teleop Multi. So as an add-on to the Teleop system, Multi allows operators to select which vehicle they want to control from the touchscreen interface. The beauty of Teleop Multi is, again, that it can be installed on any machine, any make, any model, and any type of vehicle. We see from one operator station now, operators that are running a truck or an LHD and switching or transitioning to a drill, it can easily be done as most of the functions are done through the touchscreen interface and it's fully dynamic. As an operator selects one vehicle, all the controls, the video feeds, the information, the telemetry from the vehicle, all that changes automatically to the vehicle that they've selected with no other, no other work from the operator whatsoever. And that brings us to Teleop Auto. So with the addition of Auto to Teleop, many of the functions of the machine can be fully automated with very little operation from the, um, from the user required. This, these would include driving functions, and in some applications, even loading and dumping of, of those are fully automated as well. It's currently available for underground LHDs, haul trucks, and locomotives. And what we see here is a simulation environment that this vehicle is running where it's driving between a loading cycle and a dumping area. And it's following this driving path fully automatically where it loads, gets loaded, drives the path, and then dumps at the other side. Many of the functions and features of, of the autonomous system are customizable, including the speeds that the vehicle is allowed to travel at in different areas, 
as well as all the parameters of the loading and unloading cycles. So now we've heard Teleop, Teleop Multi, and Auto, but the product we're really excited to share with you today for this presentation is the newest addition, Teleop Assist. With the addition of Assist to Teleop, it allows us to have increased machine speeds, reduced damage to equipment, reduced operator fatigue, and increased production. With Assist, any LHD can be set up to semi-autonomously drive the, the tunnel. So rather than the operator needing to do steering functions, the operator's in control of the speed and the braking of the vehicle, but all steering functions are done by the Assist system itself. A little bit later, Jeff is going to show us the functionality in the operator station itself and get in a little more detail with that. But the, the operator, because they're not in charge of the steering function of the vehicle, reduced damage is, um, is one of the benefits. Any underground teleop LHD can now be upgraded with the assist edition, which will allow us to take control of the steering functions while leaving the operator in control of the speed and braking functions of the vehicle. Because the system is now in control of all the steering, and because of the 3D LiDAR technology that we're using on the vehicles, it reduces equipment damage because all the decisions are made with the environment in mind. Assist is a very nice addition to the Teleop product suite because it requires no previous setup to the area, no pre-scanned areas, no training, no maps to upload, simply install the system on the LHD, turn it on in the area, and the operator is good to drive. One of the major features of Teleop Assist is the utilization of 3D LiDAR technology. Using 3D LiDARs, we're able to scan a much larger portion of the, of the tunnel of the drift and use that information to make decisions better. So changing environments, things like the vehicle driving over rocks or driving in ruts, or even transitioning between flat grade into up ramps or down ramps can be done much better using 3D LiDAR and with the Teleop Assist system. So for an assist vehicle, we would add on two 3D LiDARs to the machine, one on the front and one on the rear of the vehicle. And what this allows us is to get a very good view of the, of the machine, of the area, um, over the, the bucket of the, of the LHD, as well as a very good view behind. One of the features that we're excited with the Teleop Assist is the addition of uh, collision detection, where impending collisions that may be in the area can be detected with the LiDAR and the machine can be brought to a stop because of that. With the addition of Teleop Assist also brings many other features that are incorporated well into the entire Teleop product line. One of these, which Jeff will explain a little bit later in more detail, is the addition of cruise control. So now available on Teleop and Assist enabled vehicles is cruise control, again allowing for reduced operator fatigue. And the next one is the takeover command. With Teleop, operators can very easily, with the push of a button, take over control from a Teleop auto vehicle or now from assist vehicles. Vehicles can be transitioned from auto to assist or from either semi-autonomous or fully autonomous into Teleop or full control. And this is done, again, with the touch of a button, making it extremely fast, extremely easy, and making it where the operator doesn't need to bring the vehicle to a stop when entering or leaving areas that the semi-autonomous or autonomous functions can be used. So now that we've heard a lot of the features and benefits of Teleop Assist, what we'd really like to do is, is show you the functionality. And to do that, Jeff is going to operate the vehicle and demonstrate some of the many features and benefits of Teleop Assist. Thanks, Ryan. So now let's do an overview of our control station. We'll talk about the chair. We'll talk a little bit about the interface, uh, the look and feel of it. It's a very user-friendly interface. I'll show you some of my favorite parts. Uh, and we're even going to take a machine for a little test drive at our test mine uh, about 50 kilometers away from here. We have an LHD there that we've outfitted with our Teleop Assist uh, system that you've heard a lot about. So we're going to get to see that in action. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit about the controls. This here is a Teleop control station and it's a generic control station, meaning it can be used to control any type of machine. All of that is done right from this chair. These same joysticks can be used to control any of those uh, machines. 
So our interface is very user friendly. You can see there's a touch screen where the operator uh, controls the machine from, activates certain controls, buttons, and so, so forth. And then of course the TV screen in front of him displays two big high definition camera feeds from the machine uh, as he operates. The chair is very simple. It has a couple of joysticks that are generic. The controls are not specific to any type of machine because remember, this teleop chair can be used to control a variety of different machine types, perhaps an LHD, a truck, a rock breaker. Uh, so all of that can be done using these controls. There's also pedals, uh, depending on the type of machine being used. Some operators prefer to use joysticks to drive the machine, others prefer pedals. Uh, and that's really the beauty of the way we've designed the Teleop uh, control station. It allows for uh, different operators who have different preferences to be able to use the same chair uh, and control the machine in a way that they feel comfortable. Definitely one of my favorite things about the Teleop station is the user interface. It's very user friendly, it's very clean, it's very simple. And we've heard that feedback from a lot of our operators and customers. Uh, they love how easy it is to use. I'm going to show you some of the screens. And you'll see as I go through them, we really went for kind of an app sort of feel, something that you might use on your phone or your tablet rather than a computer program kind of feel. So it makes it very, very simple to follow and very quick to learn, too, for new operators as well. Let's take a look. So this here is the login screen. Now, each operator has their own user account. Uh, and that's important because, as I mentioned, there's many user preferences that could be tied for each operator depending on what they like to do. So as soon as I log in under Jeff, it loads my preferences and the machines are going to work the way I like them to work. If a different operator loads it under their username, well, they get their preferences. Uh, so the interface starts off very nice, clean, simple. I see other operators are currently working on different machines. So uh, I'm going to start a brand new session for myself. All the machines that are available to me are here. And you'll notice there's many different types. There's rock breakers there, trucks, LHDs. Again, that's because this teleop chair is capable of connecting to any of those machine types. So for today, I'm going to pick uh, an LHD. I choose the area that I want to work it in. And then I answer some safety questions just to make sure that uh, everything is good to go. When I'm ready to begin operating, I enter the main form on the touchscreen. I have a few more safety questions. And again, these are um, questions that can be made unique to each mine site, depending on uh, what your protocol is, what you want your operators to do before you begin operating. They can answer those questions. Uh, so you'll see the main interface here. Now, as I said, my favorite thing about it is how easy it is to use. Uh, the buttons that I need are always there for me. Along the bottom are all the main controls that I would need. Uh, turning my park brake on and off, for example. Uh, but you'll see there's a lot of other stuff going on on the screen here. So what is all this? Uh, we have different tabs that will access all kinds of different settings. But it's stuff that I might not use as often throughout my shift. Uh, for example, uh, Ryan talked about our GPIO, our general purpose input output, uh, that can be used to control a variety of things in the, in the mine, chutes, sprayers, for example. And so this is where I would control all, all that. Nice, simple, big buttons, easy to see. Uh, we have other more extensive troubleshooting tools uh, that allow me to keep an eye on the system. If anything goes wrong, I can go here to see uh, what might be happening. And there's even a help screen that outlines what the controls are. If I were to pick a different machine, you would see uh, this layout changes. It shows me what the buttons, what the joysticks do for that machine. Um, so those are all extra things, troubleshooting tools, uh, little tools that help me if I need them. But when I'm operating, I don't really need that stuff there. I just want the simple stuff. I can get it out of the way. I see my machine. I have my basic controls that I use all the time. Uh, and that's it. it. Makes it nice and easy for me to operate. I can look at what I want to look at. And things that aren't important to me right now uh, are gone, uh, rather than creating a little bit too much clutter on the screen. So I really, really like that about our interface.
what you see here is a machine that is equipped with assist. As I said, we were going to drive our LHD that we have at our NORCAT testing mine. So here it is. It's about 50 kilometers away from us right now, and it is running in assist. So what you see there with the orange points is the LiDAR on the machine that is bouncing off the surroundings, the walls and the drift. Uh, Ryan mentioned that assist is very easy to implement in your mine, and we kind of see why that is right here. You can see there's, no, there's not a pre-scan of the entire mine required. We don't need to go in and scan the drift. Uh, it's simply the LiDAR on the machine, that's the eyes. That's all it needs uh, to be able to drive around. So the implementation is as, as simple as on the machine itself. Uh, so some of the controls that are on the bottom. Uh, we have a key on and off, so that's the main run of the machine. Just turning the key switch on and off. Uh, we can start our engine. We can release our park brake. And we have our headlight controls here, headlights and taillights. Uh, and my personal favorite, our cruise control. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later uh, when we drive the machine. You'll see how cool that is. Uh, on the side here is uh, the switching between our fully autonomous system, the auto, uh, and our semi-autonomous, the assist system. So you can see when I switch to auto, I have um, uh, auto-based options. So these are waypoints that I can go to. You'll see my interface has changed a little bit with driving lines and pre-mapped areas that are in there. So that's available with the auto package. Again, all from the same chair. Uh, it's very simple to switch between the two. When we're in assist, our interface is a little bit more blank and simple because, uh, as we learned, we don't need to pre-map or choose locations. Uh, things are a little bit simpler in assist. Uh, some other features on the touchscreen, we have uh, an advanced diagnostic tool. So this is our web, uh, our web interface that shows you all the machines connected to the system, all the teleop control stations that are connected to the system, all the different levels or work zones that are set up, and it gives you a live status of all of them. Um, so this is a really great, easy way for an operator to see the status of his level. Uh, for example, this is the one I'm operating in right now. It shows me the devices in there and whether they're communicating or whether there's a trouble in communication to one over here. Uh, so it's, it's a great troubleshooting tool uh, if someone were to open a barrier and close, uh, shut down my machine because someone has entered the, the remote work zone uh, right away, I would be notified of that uh, and I would be able to see that in here. I'd know exactly where, where the issue is. So it's a great way to uh, get back up and running quick should something happen. And it couldn't be more user-friendly uh, and easy to op operate. Uh, as I said, it's, it's just like using an app on your cell phone or a tablet. Um, you're tapping with your finger to see all the information you need rather than getting a keyboard and a mouse and opening up different windows. And it doesn't work like a computer program. It works like an app. So I just love it. And uh, our, our customers in the field feel the same way. So now we get to the fun part. We're going to drive a machine and we're going to show you what Assist can do. So right now, I'm still here in downtown Sudbury. And I'm connected to our LHD, our Iromine that we have at the NORCAT uh, test center. It's about 50 kilometers away from here. So I'm happy that I can be here in the comfort of this office rather than uh, underground. So that's a big plus. Um, so we have our, our LHD at NORCAT. We rent a drift from NORCAT. We've been using uh, that uh, site at Fukunis for a lot of our research and development, a lot of our testing. Uh, it's been awesome to work with the people at NORCAT. There's definitely been uh, a huge help uh, from them in us being able to develop our technology and do what we do. Uh, so we're definitely happy to have a test site set up there. Uh, so let's, uh, let's give this a try. So here you see our air mine underground. We've set up a course for it to uh, tighten up the drift and really put assist to the test. As you can see, I'm parked at a, a T-junction. I have a flat wall in front of me, so I either have to go left or right. So what I'm going to do is engage assist, and I'm going to get assist to turn right for me. For me to do this on my own would be tricky, um, but I engage assist, and all I have to do is push right on the joystick to tell it to take the next right, and we'll see it navigate this turn. 
And so now we're headed down the drift and all I have to do is give it throttle. So I'm not steering this machine, assist is doing all that for me. Um, as you can see from the LiDAR feed on our touchscreen, it's able to keep itself centered in the drift. As an operator, um, all I have to do is give it throttle, uh, tell it how fast or slow to go, but as far as the turning left and right, and articulating, that's all assist. Um, I can tell you for sure that if I was in control of the machine, um, there's no way I could go at this speed. I would be crawling through this course. Um, but right now with assist, I'm literally full throttle, pinned, uh, and it's able to keep me centered very well. So we headed through our course in, in forward. Now we're gonna head in reverse. You see the reverse camera feed here, and that's the, the forward view. So we're driving in reverse and I'm gonna engage cruise. Now with cruise control, I can literally take my foot off the pedal, give my foot a rest if I was using that to drive, or I take my hand off the joystick for operators who prefer using the joystick to drive. Um, so I'm able to uh, rest my hand, rest my foot, and assist and cruise are doing all the work for me. Cruise is keeping that throttle maintained so my machine keeps moving, and assist is keeping it centered and so my machine keeps steering. So life couldn't get any easier for me as an operator at this point. I can keep full speed down that drift and I don't have to do anything but watch. So what I'm gonna show you right now is another feature of cruise that we think operators are really gonna appreciate. My machine is driving in cruise, but when I get to a particularly tough spot like this corner coming up, I can pull back on the joystick to momentarily drop the throttle. Just gives the machine a little bit more time to react, get around that corner, and I let go once I know I've made it and my machine will pick up speed once again. So what I'd like to show you now is our takeover command. And we've got a little bit of a, a close up view of the touch screen just because it, it illustrates it a little bit better. So I'm driving along in assist right now. Again, assist is uh, automatically steering for me. And when I need to take over as an operator, all I have to do is click one button to disengage assist. assist and now I've taken over. I'm in control, full control of the machine. So I can proceed to load or dump the loader. And when it's time for me to back out of the stope, uh, it's as easy as one click again to re-engage the semi-autonomous semi mode. So I back out. Assist and now assist is steering for me again. So transitioning between full control to semi-autonomous and back and forth, there's no need for me to slow down, completely stop the machine. Um, there's no need for me to change views on the touch screen. It's a simple click of the button. In assist mode, assist in full control, assist back in assist mode, and so on. So that's been a little overview of our teleop control station. You've seen assist in action. Uh, you've seen what an operator sees when they're driving assist. We've gotten to show you some of the different little features and add-ons that make life so much easier for the operators. Uh, and of course, our, uh, our wonderful user interface. You've seen how user-friendly it is and intuitive. Thank you, Jeff, for that demonstration and uh, presentation. So that's our Teleop Assist product. We've been excited to share it with you, and we're excited to bring this product to market now. Thank you to the Northern Miner webinar series for having us as well. If you have any questions, we'll be open to a Q&A in just a moment. But in addition to that, if you want to reach out to us via email, you can do so at info at hard-line.com. You can also reach out to us and we invite you to follow our social media channels, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. In addition to that, our website, hard-line.com, has information on all of our other product lines that we'd be in happy to share with you. Coming up soon in the new year, we have many more products that we'll be excited to show and uh, showcase as the time comes up. But in the meantime, uh, that's it for our presentation today. And now we'll open it up to some questions. All right. <clears throat> Great stuff. Thank you so much for that, Ryan. Ryan, are you back with us there? I'm here, yep. That was exciting. That was really good. I alluded to it before. I believe it. You know, this idea, sometimes the mining industry gets a little criticized for not innovating fast enough. So here, you know, I hope everyone appreciates we brought you a company that is at the forefront of innovation. And that really, that showed it there. And the fact that so much of this 
uh, manufacturing is being done right in Sudbury. Uh, is, is a, it's, a really, it's a really great story. And having Jeff kind of go through it, it really brings it all into, into clearer focus about what the power of this is. It's very impressive stuff. Um, I guess the, the first thing for me I would want to, that the popped into my mind is just when we're talking this high tech, the stakes are high. We have LHDs going into, into tight areas. Um, has there been real world testing um, of this and what's the feedback been if there has been? There has been, yeah. So as, as mentioned, this is a new uh, new product for us that we're bringing to market. We've uh, um, mentioned earlier, Teleop has been uh, installed and proven on on all kinds of equipment and and with uh, with huge success all over the world. Um, Teleop Assist coming new to the marketplace now. We have had installations where we've been able to to put it in with uh, with some of our um, our key clients and, and partners, and uh, the response from from users and and from the mines has been has been great. The uh, just just being able to use it and seeing the the simplicity of it and and how easy it is to um, to upgrade machines has been uh, the reception has been uh, has been awesome. Great. And you saw we hit upon it in the video that it's really about getting those kind of two lidar cameras, one at the front, one at the back. But how involved is even that process of, process of installing those? Can you take us through a little bit of the ins and outs and that? How much time would it take to get an equipment up to speed with Teleop Assist? Sure. So uh, any Teleop enabled LHD can be uh, upgraded to Teleop Assist. So if uh, Teleop is already installed, um, as, as mentioned, there's there's two lidars that need to be added. Um, we have uh, a brackets that are made to protect those that get um, either welded or or bolted on the um, the front and the rear of the machine. Um, there's a sensor in the in the middle to to measure the uh, the steering, and uh, and that's pretty much it. So for, for customers who are using Teleop equipment, um, the add-on is, is fairly easy and, and can be done um, you know, within, within probably a shift if, uh, if uh, all the tools are there. Excellent, excellent. We have some questions coming in from our audience. First one, has this been installed on surface shovels, cable or hydraulic? Yeah, so uh, shovels for sure, we've, we've installed Teleop on. Um, the Teleop Auto and, uh, and Assist are, are just for uh, underground LHDs, haul trucks uh, and uh, locomotives right now, and then LHDs for Assist. But Teleop specifically, yeah, we've installed on uh, all kinds of surface shovels in, in open pits and, and uh, trucks and loaders and dozers and, and excavators all, all over. Great. Yeah, I imagine if you can navigate those tight tunnels and those tight drifts, the surface stuff would be uh, would be all cake at that point. Um, how about another one from the audience? Uh, how does Teleop uh, integrate with BEVs regarding OEM proprietary messaging controls? So we have installed on uh, on BEVs, and and what we've done is we've uh, on on that specific machine, obviously the. Uh, information coming back from the machine is different than, uh, than a diesel machine. The important thing we want to see is the, um, the battery voltage and some of the health of the, of the battery network. So we have, um, I'm thinking of one specific partner that we're working with that, uh, that runs lots of uh, battery electric vehicles. And um, instead of showing the critical information from the diesel engine, we're showing it from the, uh, the battery as well as the diesel all, all back to the operator. All right, excellent. So on top of that, Trend that we all know is just going to be getting bigger and bigger with the BEVs going forward. Another uh, a good one, actually, a technical one, one that actually popped into my mind when you were talking about how you can control from Sudbury all the way to Australia. But what to be able to do that, what are the bandwidth and, late, uh, bandwidth and latency requirements to operate remotely? So latency is obviously um, definitely important for operation of, of equipment. Uh, when, when an operator is in control of a, of a piece of equipment themselves, the, the video feeds, the controls, everything has to be real time. So any latency is, is going to affect his, his operation. Um, we, we've seen, uh, the, we've been able to, to run with latencies upwards of, of around um, just under 100 milliseconds is, uh, is about the most we'd want to go for, for, um, for teleop control. But as we get into more autonomous functions, um, the latency becomes a little less important. Uh, the operator is, is not so much in control of those real-time functions. So being, being able to do these semi-autonomous or even autonomous functions, um, that disconnection isn't felt as much because the system is really making those decisions instead of the operator. So, so definitely uh, latency is uh, um, important. For bandwidth, we're, um, per vehicle, our, our bandwidth requirements are, are around um, um, around eight megabit per second per vehicle. 
um, between eight and 10 is where we, we, we'd like to be. Uh, we're bringing back two high definition video feeds uh, to the operator at all times as well. So that eats up um, a fair bit of bandwidth. Okay. Now the, the other thing that was going through my mind when Jeff was demoing it and he referenced it as well as the speed, right? That was very impressive. You don't expect to see an LHD going that quickly uh, through a tight, through a tight tunnel like that. Um, I guess I have a two part one on that. Have you been, has Hardline been able to come up with a metrics around that? Like how, what is the percentage in speed um, that you're able to gain by going with the teleop assist? Has that been averaged out or is there a you know, framework that we can put in operators' minds of how much speed they gain by using this? Yeah, we've been we've been doing some studies with uh, with our customers, trying to see um, you know mainly what production gain our customers are seeing, and, and we're doing so we're doing some studies on that that we're hoping to to share shortly. Um, the main the main driver on this, but uh, is on these LHDs is uh, normally machines running in teleop are are in first gear. That's that's the uh, usually the rule. They we we don't allow out, out of first gear when we're in teleop because it just gets going too fast for the operators. But with uh, assist or even auto. Um, we're able to, to take away that limitation. So jumping an LHD from first gear up to second gear uh, um, is, is, a, is a huge improvement in, uh, in tramming speed. Excellent. Now, what about another one here from the audience? What about security in teleop auto area for other equipment and workers moving by feet? So in the areas where teleop is, is running, the, um, we have physical and logical barriers at each entrance. So uh, people, people, other equipment driving around are generally not allowed in, in the areas. Um, people are, the areas is, um, is gone through first to make sure there's no one actually in the area before they can turn it on. And then uh, once we know it's clear, the gates are all closed uh, and then the system is, um, is set up and, and operated. There's, there's some applications in Teleop Auto where there, there are um, multiple pieces of equipment in, in the area, but those are remotely controlled pieces of equipment, uh, the not unmanned pieces of equipment that the operators are, are running in, in the same area. Okay. And now Ryan, when you're obviously when you're bringing, uh, you know, something that's a technological kind of leap forward for operators that has ramifications for training, for educating operators, can you give us more context uh, around that much, uh, around that piece? Like how much is Hardline involved in the training how much can operators, how much time do they have to kind of anticipate it'll take for their operators to get trained up to operate something like this? We've, we've seen huge success in, in operator training. One thing we've done, and, and Jeff alluded to it a little bit in the video, is, is uh, there's running remotely controlled machinery. Sometimes, uh, you know, you run it with a joystick, you hold the joystick forward, the machine goes forward. But when you're in a, um, when you're in a, uh, the machine, it's, it's run differently. There's a, you select forward and then you use the pedal to, to control the throttle and, and the drive speed. So what we've done in the system is, is we allow the users to use whichever one they're comfortable with. So some users prefer a joystick control, some prefer a, a pedal control. And so what we've been able to see is, and in, in the installations, it's been a mixture of, of which operators actually like which systems. So um, it, because of that, the, the training is, is quite fast and, and the, the user's acceptance is, is quite fast as well. Jeff also mentioned the, um, the usability of the, of the touchscreen interface. We're, we're, we're so familiar with tablets and, and phones now um, with touchscreens. These are just part of our daily lives. So, so the, um, the training is, is uh, actually very fast. And, and speaking about you know, what we do for training is, is uh, we're a technology company, but we also install this equipment and uh, send our technicians around the world wherever uh, the need is. So we're, when we're on site, we do all the training, the maintenance, the, the operation training on site and, and help the, the customers out too. So that's all um, included as part of the package. Okay. Um, we have more questions coming in, which is fantastic. Um, we have a viewer that's saying that he's referring to uh, the Tele AI, which is on the screen behind you there, Ryan. And he says, can you comment on the AI part? and how this is integrated into your system. Sure, yeah. So uh, Tele-AI is, um, is the brand of our uh, Tele-Op um, software, both, both on the, the operator station as well as the, uh, the underlying software behind it. Um, AI is, is being uh, integrated uh, for um, some future projects that we're working on currently. I, I alluded to those in, in the video that uh, there's some exciting things to come that we're excited to, uh, to bring out and hopefully do another one of these when that becomes available. So that's, uh, that's, that's coming up. 
Fantastic. Well, yes, when it's a company like Hardline, you guys are always hard at work innovating and coming up with uh, with new extensions uh, to what's already a really powerful platform. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us here today. Really uh, just an excellent presentation and one that uh, that technology that really our industry needs to keep driving forward. And you guys are at the forefront of it. So really happy that you were able to make some time, happy to work with you on this. And we'll look forward to continuing to follow. And as you guys continue to innovate, we'll get you back on here for sure. Excellent. Thank you uh, again, Anthony, uh, Northern Miner. Thanks everyone for, uh, for joining. It's uh, much appreciated and enjoy the rest of your days. Excellent. To echo Ryan's comments, thank you everyone. What another great engaged audience. And we're having some uh, congratulations coming in from some of our, our viewers here, Ryan, and that's for you. So uh, congrats from our viewers to you as well and a great presentation. Thanks so much, everyone. Let's all have a great rest of the week. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.